Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski. And I have today with me some folks from the Friends of Beverly Animals. Welcome, ladies. And I have with me first uh, Jill Ald, who is a foster parent, correct? Sorry. And Heidi Roberts, who is the director of the organization, and Bonnie Hannibal, who is the secretary, editor, chief dish and bottle washer of the organization. <laughs> Ladies, welcome to, uh, to North Shore Journal. And today we're going to be talking about all the great work that the Friends of Beverly Animals does. And to kick it off, you guys are primarily involved with, I uh, know from the very beginning, Heidi, with cats. So we're going to show a couple of pictures of cats. Some of these cats showed up at the very beginning with some injuries. Uh, so I just want to tell our viewers that you might see some abrasions on some of these cats. So uh, don't, get, don't get startled. They're all in very good health now. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the cats and maybe Heidi or whoever wants to. Yeah. This was one of the first animals, right? Tell us about that, it. That was Millie. That's, that was the catalyst that we started Friends of Beverly Animals. Okay. I found Millie on Mill Street in Beverly. She had her um, flea collar around and she had her her arm stuck through her flea collar. You can see the wounds. Oh, there you and go. it was okay. in terrible shape. And yeah. so... At the time, I was um, helping out for strays in need in Danvers. I, I volunteered for them for 10 years. They used to take care of Beverly cats, too. So I called them. They said, we don't do Beverly anymore. So I called the city, and they said, we don't have any money. Mm -hmm. So I brought Millie to Dr. Borash, and it um, cost $200. But I took Millie home, and she was fine, and she recuperated and was placed. All right. Yep. Uh, we have a couple of pictures of Millie there now. This is this yes. was still when she had some of her injuries, yeah. right? Yes. And then I think we have a couple of happy pictures. Yes. Now. This is when yeah. she was recovered. Yes. And and uh, looking now is this a picture of Millie as well? Or no. This, this, this was a, way in the beginning before I even. Okay. Well, we're gonna let's let's show this. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Matt to focus in on the on the uh, picture I have here, and. Um, and tell us what we're looking at here. We're talking about the cat in the back, right? The larger cat? Uh, yes, that's Katie. Katie. I found Katie in the 1990s on Kittridge Street as I did a market analysis for a house. And we walked in the yard and I saw her sitting under a bush with some kittens. Yeah. And I said to the owner, and whose cat is that? He said, it's not mine and I don't want her here. So somebody left her behind. So I took her in and with her kittens. That's not one of the kittens. And... That's when I found um, the, the animal control officer at the time, Amy Sear, told me about strays in need. So I mm -hmm. said, oh, I found my people. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so I volunteered for strays in need for 10 years until, you know, we started the group with Millie. Now, you, you, you said something. You were there doing a, an analysis or something for a house. Now, yes. now uh, our viewers should understand yeah. that you have a full-time job and you have had for many years. Yeah. You're a realtor. Yes. Yeah. And so you're, all the work that you do with the Friends of Beverly Animals, you do this on your own as pretty much as an unpaid volunteer. Of course. Correct? We all are. Yeah, yes. Uh, so, so the folks should, should realize that, that these mm -hmm. folks don't get paid for all of the good work uh, that they do. And you did bring you did bring something up now about um, uh, unspayed uh, uh, cats, cats that need to be neutered and so forth. Tell us what the situation is nowadays here on the North Shore with regard to that. Well, um, I can talk about the pandemic. A lot of people got themselves a pandemic puppy or kitten. Yeah. And of course, there's a shortage of veterinarians. They couldn't get them fixed. So then now, do you want to talk about maybe about... Yeah, we've Jill had a steady a stream of um, young one- and two-year-olds um, over the last couple of years, actually. Um, they're not vetted, you know, surrenders or street cats that we pick up. We try, we always post everything, say, does anyone know this cat? You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and we, so, get a, we get a call from the neighbors or... Yeah. Um, so basically a lot of people took in cats to have something to play with or mm -hmm. something to hug while they couldn't go out and mm -hmm. socialize. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as the pandemic was over, they... Now, where where are these cats now? Where where do they hang out? Where do you keep them at home? Do you have foster parents? So you're a foster, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. We have foster homes. Not too many. Um, but I have a black cat right now. He's about two. And he was surrendered. Um 
someone bought them on Craigslist and now, you know, they have moved on. So we had him neutered. We had his EV shots, all his medical, and now he's available for adoption. Okay. And tell us about the, 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 there's an urgent need now for for uh, people to adopt and, and foster mm -hmm. uh, cats and kittens. Uh, uh, I mean, how, uh, how big a pool of these kinds of animals do you have right now? Well, we only have three foster homes. It's yeah. very difficult. Jill just took in a cat from uh, Gloucester Crossing who was highly pregnant. Mm -hmm. I happened to find her when I was showing a house. <laughs> So she had her she kittens. just had the kittens <laughs> Friday night. Yeah. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah. So they're what three or okay. four days old now. Yeah. 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 So they they were born in a nice fresh towel, you know, safe yeah. and inside. It's going to be yeah. cold tomorrow. You know, they would have been outside. Yeah. You know, if we hadn't taken her in. Now you work through um, an organization called Pet Finder for for adoption to, for pe pets that are available for adoption. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, Jill does yeah, it now. We yeah, we list all the cats that we have adopt for adoption on Pet Finder, Adopt a Pet, and Facebook. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, and, and if somebody wants to have a central place to go to, do we have a uh, the website friendsofbeverlyanimals.org, Robert? Can we put that up if we have that? So this is where we could ask they tell you that we need a volunteer to help us with our website. Okay, <laughs> we had so, John oh, for no. years, and all he was right, fabulous. So we, don't, uh, we don't have that. <laughs> well, image, he moved but, to Arizona. So um, we do have a website, friendsofbeverlyanimals.org, yeah. yes, okay. um, but it's we kind of, Bonnie and I try to keep it going, but um, we could use someone that wants to move, renovate it and f make it more graphics. You okay. know, it's a lot of text. So and, maybe, and, and I think Heidi, you gave me your, your, your Comcast, so we, can we put that up there? Heidi Roberts at Comcast.net, if people want to contact you directly, if they're interested in being your uh, webmaster. If I can sure, yeah. say that. Okay. Yeah, so, that's fine. So yeah. they can, uh, Heidi Roberts, mm -hmm. H-E-I-D-I -E Roberts yeah. at Comcast.net. So strictly volunteer. Strictly, yeah, strictly volunteer. So this mm -hmm. is not a, a paid no. a paid engagement. Um, and now you, you, you folks do do some fundraising. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe uh, you could tell us about some of the fundraising things that you, uh, that you do. Well, we've had a lot of different kinds of uh, events and we've had gone had comedy shows, wine tasting. Um, we've had um, what we used to call the fur ball for years. It was just you know music and dancing and everything, and and uh, people would or businesses would give us items to use for um, raffle or auction items so that we could raise more money. Um, the last three years, we've actually had uh, a nice young man called Jim Lucas who has been um, happy to do our trivia night, which people love. I mean, Joan Lovely, Senator Lovely, told me after the first one that she was at, she said, I had such a good time. She said, I stayed the whole evening. I love the people at my table. <laughs> and that she just said, happened I'm... this past September, right? This just happened last month? We had it? one, yeah, in yeah. September and then two years before that. So um, that seemed to be a real popular uh, event. Yeah. We're always looking for more things that, um, you know, don't cost us a lot of money to put on that yeah. we can make no. money for. Jill's doing the, uh, Jill and her daughter are doing the calendars, so we sell those too. Yeah, we have a, we have a picture of the front of, the, of this year's, or maybe it's the back of this year's calendar, Robert, if you could put that up. And you've been doing this for, for what, about 10 years or so? 14 uh, years. 14 years. Yeah. So we could see a picture of what the, the calendar looks like for this, uh, this year. Right, and they're available right now yeah. at Copper Dog Books, the Dog Spa, and Dogs and Cats, too, yeah. in North Beverly. And yeah. I, have to, I have to say that I had my pets on that calendar for many years, and mm -hmm. I haven't done it for the last couple of years, but uh, my dogs and cats and birds, my yeah. daughter's birds mm -hmm. were actually mm -hmm. on the... So that's the calendar for 2023. And... And people can can they order this buy this online or do they have to go to a shop? Where, where can they get the calendars? Um, if they go to our website, which is uh, friendsofbeverlyanimals.org, mm -hmm. um, there's instructions there on how to get it. There's a donate button, and you hit that, and then you just say that you want a uh, calendar or more than one, and how to figure the cost of that. Uh, there's also going to be um, the First Baptist Church has a, a great holiday fair every year, and that's coming up uh, November 19th on Saturday from 9 to 2.30.
And they had, that's a great event by itself, just uh, the music and the food and the crafts that are there and everything. But we have, we sell calendars there. So if anybody mm -hmm. wants to buy a calendar, that's yep. a good place to get and it. And when is that happening? Where is that going to be? It's on a Saturday, November 19th at First Baptist Church. Okay, so that's about two weeks from, or maybe a week and a half from, yeah, week from, and today, a half. from, from today. And uh, you also have a Facebook present, uh, presence mm -hmm. as well, where you have all mm -hmm. a lot of up-to-date information uh, about the animals that are available and and uh, and adoption and, and so forth and all and, and your activities uh, as well. And uh, you also uh, put out a newsletter, right? Um, yes, we do. How um, often does that come out? Um, it's usually uh, four or five times a year. Um, it's we when we did it when I started doing it, uh, we did it maybe a little more often, but. No, I'm not sure about that. But we printed them out then and made hard copies. And so we had the expense of um, using a printer. And um, it's been a lot easier just to email them. And so, uh, again, if anyone wants to be added to our list, and we do not share our lists with anybody, mm -hmm. um, but they can just let us know at uh, Friends of Beverly Animals. Dot org. Mm -hmm. And how many subscribers do you currently have that you send the e newsletter um, out to? It's, I think it's around 700. Um, and most of them are for, from, you know, this area. But we have quite a few that are out of town or out of state also. Um, and people send in photographs from, from, you know, just about everywhere. We have a good friend who always sends our photos for, from Alabama and um, we always use her pictures of her kitties, no. and we and the the calendar also has uh, you know a lot of dogs and I think there's a pig in it and a llama, and <laughs> <laughs> a lot of different animals, not yeah. just so not we're, just cats. We're not just restricted to cats and dogs. Right. Yeah. And now I think we have a series of images. Maybe Robert, if you could put up some of the. Uh, I think we have some with the uh, Mayor Scannon, Mayor Cahill, and some other mm -hmm. shots of some fundraising activities. Maybe we could. Okay, so was it? This was at an event. Uh, this was at running? a furball, uh, maybe five years ago, something like that, when uh, Mayor Cahill came, and yeah, he he came for several years. I don't think he came to the last couple of things, but yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, yes. and, and the and next Jerry shot, Carousel. please, Robert. Now, this yeah, is with Mayor, Mayor Scanlon. Scanlon. Uh -huh. Okay, and that's, that's you and, uh, Heidi, and Heidi. And then there, there, there's Sharon a, Cook. Who's, Sharon Cook, okay. Who's our vice president. Okay, and that's in City Hall. Right. City Hall mm -hmm. Chambers with then Mayor <laughs> Cahill. Now, this yeah. is this group. Tell us about this group and what's going on here. This was a, a, a dinner, actually, that we had at John Archer's house. Uh, he's not in that particular photograph, but uh, he's a good friend, too, and... Um, donor and he has offered his house for any kind of function that we want to have. Um, so it, that was just a really nice mm -hmm. event at mm -hmm. his house in uh, Danvers. In Danvers. And the next shot? No, I think this yeah, John is, is in this. He's holding. Now, yeah, is that one of his dogs? He's holding one yeah. of his beagles. Well, yeah, yeah. 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 He's, he's yeah. really fond of those dogs. Mm -hmm. I know. Oh, he is. Yeah. 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 And this was this was at, at John's house. Yeah. Right. John is a philanthropist and, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, very generous. He very was. Generous person. Uh, he, a few years ago, you probably remember this. He was uh, given an award for all the um, charities and nonprofit organizations he was involved in on the board. Too, of and too many. To, Just uh, huge. Yeah. yeah. And baby, oh, can we back up to that last shot again? Okay, so tell us what we're looking at here, uh, Bonnie. This is the uh, Baptist Church Fair with our table and uh, uh, our vol four of us volunteers uh, welcoming people and selling the calendar to them. Yeah, and uh, uh, our viewers may, may remember uh, that uh, for a while, for about six or seven years, we uh, you produced a show here on Bad Cam called... Mm -hmm. Friends of Beverly Animals, and I think we have the the logo to that, Robert. If you could, uh, if you could show that, uh, and this is the Friends of Beverly Animals logo that we had, and this was a show that we that you produced for six or seven years, but unfortunately, um, uh, the 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 uh, the lady that was the host moved away. Right. But you would like to resurrect this show, mm -hmm. correct? So. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, uh, I'll, I'll let you say it, yeah. but we're, we're, through this show, uh, sitting right here, we'd like to make 
an appeal to our viewers and anybody that you know that may be interested. Uh, Heidi, why don't you tell us what uh, we're, we're interested in getting a host or hostess to? Well, yeah, and a producer. A producer. Because okay. Kim, who did it, she did it. She did yeah, everything. Kim, her yes. name was Kim Heider. And Kim she did Heider, yeah. Her. We would help, you know, with with um, things to discuss and maybe have uh, guest speakers in from different other animals, organizations, or maybe even, you know, the uh, animal control officer, people like that. Yeah, there's so many yeah, different topics so many, for discussions. Yeah, and be, so uh, yeah. we are looking uh, mm -hmm. Friends of Beverly Animals. We could also, person. we brought in cats, those. We brought in cats and kittens for adoption into the studio. Yeah, well, well, once you see them, they're, they're, they're hard to resist, oh, okay. aren't they? Right. <laughs> oh. um, now, now you're you're trying to expand. Well, I know for yes. for a while, Heidi, you were trying to get some kind of a shelter presence here yeah. in Beverly, and that yeah. that kind of no. was a, a a heartbreaking uh, sort of an endeavor that never brought fruit. Yeah. Uh, t tell us what you were trying to do and well, where just, that sits now. Just a small shelter with a city-owned building, like they have in Ip Ipswich and in Marblehead. Mm -hmm. They have, um, you know, the city owns the building, and the group, the animal rights uh, animal group, runs it. Yeah. But I, the last time I talked with Mayor Cahill, and uh, he said, well, maybe a regional shelter between Beverly, Salem, and uh, Peabody. Mm -hmm. That would make sense. Yeah. Has there been any discussion, further discussion or movement? In, I don't know. I mean, I, I can't do it. Yeah. It's too yeah. much. Yeah. And now tell us about Sweet Paws, P-A-W-S. That's an organization yeah. that you have done some collaboration with or would like Not to? Not yet. We would like to. Um, it's Cynthia Sweet started her group about 10 years ago, and they do dogs and cats. But they have a facility in Groveland, so they can bring in dogs from down south, like Mississippi, and they have to be quarantined and vetted. And so they can do that right there. We can't do that. I'd like to expand to dogs because we can get more, maybe more foster homes and maybe more volunteers because there's about 6,000 dogs in Beverly. According mm -hmm. to the animal control, there's maybe four. Uh, you 4, mean 000, licensed dogs? Four thousand licensed, and he thinks there's maybe two thousand more. <laughs> that are just what roaming the streets? Or no, no, not, not roaming the streets. No, in Beverly licensed. we have we have good. You know, Beverly is pretty good. Yeah. But other cities they get rid of their dogs now, like <clears throat> some Lawrence and places like that. They now find abandoned dogs. Mm -hmm. So we could take some dogs over once they're vetted and quarantined. If we find foster homes for dogs. You know, we could then adopt them out through us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. it would expand the group yeah. now and what, help a lot more dogs. Now, what what do you look for in a, in a foster home situation? Do you, how do you vet the foster foster homes? Tell us a little bit about that process. We have a whole application that people have to fill out. Okay. And then we check their references. And in order to foster an animal, you have to have a separate place. For example, if you foster a cat, you have to have a separate room. To keep the cat in, a whole separate room or just yeah, a, like a separate bedroom or something like this in, in the beginning. Okay, and make sure that you know that the cat gets along with if there's any other animals in the home. Okay, so and also, you know, I don't think people should have really small children when they foster. Yeah, you know. Now, do you do you have them submit pictures of the of their home or their their environment, or how do you just take it for their word or? Did, did you go out to their place of, of uh, you know, where they're going to foster? I think we have in the past. We've gone to places sometimes. We don't have that many fosters. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> so we know who they are. Yeah. yeah. We have also have what's called the failed foster. Mm -hmm. Failed yeah. fosters, which mm -hmm. <laughs> all the groups call that. So if somebody wants to foster an, an animal, and then they fall in love with it, and they mm -hmm. want to adopt oh, it. Oh, so we call that's that a good a thing. Failed, failed foster is a yes, good thing. Yes, it's okay. a good thing, and we encourage that. Okay. No problem. Okay. But that's yeah. what happens to our foster volunteers. Right, exactly. <laughs> you, you lose a volunteer, but yes. you get a forever home. Yes, right? yeah. yeah. And, and now, are the fostering forms on your on your website, on uh, friendsofbeverlyanimals.org? Mm -hmm. can, can the, so the on the form? lower right-hand side of the website, yeah. there's a button that will take you to the application. And yeah. they could email it to Heidi. Okay, okay, and uh, and uh, and then also I, adoption information to it. We have an application on for the adoption. We check references and everything. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Now you you uh, uh, in in preparing for this show, you mentioned to me Heidi that there is a 
a shortage of veterinarians? Is that because of the, the COVID situation? Tell, tell us about that. What, what should people know? Well, it must be because you can't get appointments anymore. You know, mm -hmm. uh, local vets, they just have, they don't take any more uh, new clients. It's a real problem. And I think that's why a lot of the animals didn't get uh, spayed or neutered, the cats. So, and I think it's nationwide. Yeah. Is that is that because people aren't going into that profession, or what? What? What's I the... I have no idea. Maybe there are too many animals now, because I I read the paper too. When you see the dogs for for sale in the newspaper, uh huh, I see the prices coming down now. I think during the pandemic, a lot of people were breeding dogs, and they could you know get a lot of money for them, and adopt them out, and that that's kind of created an overabundance of dogs. Mm -hmm. And maybe cats. Yeah. So, and, and now, are there? You, you mentioned that that uh, the 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 uh, uh, the political side of the aisle here has has suggested the idea of a, of a regional shelter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what what's going on in our sister communities like Salem, Denver's, Peabody? Do they have actual shelter locations, or they have they have organizations like yourselves? What what's going on in those towns? There's one in Peabody called. I mean, actually, they're in Salem, but they call it PALS, Peabody Animal Life Savers. Okay. And most of their cats come from um, Lynn and Chelsea. There's somebody who traps cats, and they bring them all there. And they have they, they're in PetSmart. That's where you can actually see the animals. Now Danvers has strays in need, but I don't think they're very active. Mm -hmm. Now Salem has the um, Northeast Animal Shelter, but but there again, they don't really take animals off the street. Mm -hmm. They take mostly from down south. There's a place for everybody here. Yeah, yeah. So that's why, you know, we need a place where people could bring animals, you know, to a shelter. And we could find volunteers to run it. You right. know, to volunteers. People would love to volunteer an hour to a week, yeah. cleaning cages and playing with animals and so yeah. forth. Yeah. Now you're you're all, you're also looking for for donations. Now these mm -hmm. these would be obviously monetary donations, but also can, can people donate like products like like cat food and blankets and litter or things like that? Uh, how would they go about doing that? Would they contact you through your website, or how would that work? Well, we have a, a bin at Stop and Shop in Beverly down on Enon Street, where people drop things off. We really can't use blankets, but we don't have a shelter. Yeah. But we could use cat food or or uh, litter. If we get dog food, our vice president goes up to, there's a an animal shelter in New Hampshire that bring the dog food to. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. and people have dropped them off in my house. <laughs> <laughs> on my uh, porch, I come out yeah. with cat food litter. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can see that you're a, you're a shoestring organization, aren't yeah. you? I mean, now, are, how many, uh, am I looking at the entire entire staff of, no. of Friends of Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. How big an organization do you have supporting? The, the... Hmm. Well, we have two Rough. more fosters. And then we have other people that come and help out with um, when we have fundraisers and, and so for forth. Events yeah, and events. Like that, yeah, events. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and yeah. would they foster uh, one animal or would they, could they foster more than uh, more than one animal? What, the new fosters? Yeah, well, any, any fosters. Whatever how, they how want. I have a diabetic cat right now that um, <laughs> yeah. I've had a month or two, and I, was, I had no diabetic experience, no needle experience at all, and it's, it's really quite easy, relatively easy. Um, you know, we have her on Pet Finder available for adoption. She's a beautiful calico. She's about five years old. She came from Mill Street in Beverly. Um, her owners just decided that wasn't something that they were going to yeah. do. Um, so I learned how to do the diabetic um, so what do you do, shots. Jill, for a diabetic cat? I'm, I'm curious. Right. So you have to keep them on a little bit of a strict schedule because they have to get that insulin shot. You just make a little tent with their skin and push it in while they're eating. Um, and then <laughs> twice a day, you know, every 12 hours you do that. And that's really, um, I mean, if she's having an issue and not acting normally, you might want to take a blood sample, which I'm terrible at. And that's why we need someone to foster or adopt this cat. <laughs> Some yeah. of those are, you prick their little ear and you get a blood drop and you read their sugar and it can, she's had it as high as 691 and I think it's supposed to be down around 150, 175. So what do you do when it spikes? You give them some? 
Yeah, that's the question. What do you do? You know, hopefully the vet's open. Um, you can call them. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't happen. No, I mean we ha- yeah. have her stabilized. I guess uh-huh. is the word. Yeah. You know, we're if she gets her shot and her meal every twelve hours, then there's no problems. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, she always uses her litter box. She's a good girl. Good you girl. know, she and she waddles. She's a little fat thing. You know, and uh, she's got a little neuropathy in her back legs and. You know, she's really cute. <laughs> well, I would yeah. like to make an appeal to our viewers. Yeah. If you would like to adopt uh, a diabetic cat yeah. that's not a lot of trouble and waddles a little bit, <laughs> yeah. I think this is an opportunity to yeah. to show some kindness to one of our fellow fellow creatures. Yeah, I thought maybe a family that had someone that was diabetic that could really, you could know, and would to understand it, yeah. it better than I do. Yeah, yeah. I want to add, too, that um, we also pay for uh, medication, for some of these people when okay. they adopt them. Yes, because these are hard to adopt cats. They're usually like 15, 16. We just had one adopted, Sassy, who needed medication in her ears twice a day. And okay. somebody from Ipswich adopted Sassy. And what we pay for the medication because she's well, on yeah, a that, limited income. I think that's important income. to know for a yeah. potential uh, foster yeah. is mm-hmm. that yeah. they don't have to take uh, out of pocket to mm-hmm. pay for medication so mm-hmm. that Friends of Beverly Animals will yeah. subsidize the cost of any kind mm-hmm. of medication. Well, that, that that's wonderful yeah. that, that that you can do that. We have another cat Der- who was found mm-hmm. on Derby Street in Salem, was mm-hmm. living out about 10 years out there, and now is in a home in Beverly. But we pay for medications. The, the cat was renamed Lydia. So right. Derby Lydia is yeah. doing well, happy, and everyone's that, happy. Yeah, yeah. fantastic, mm-hmm. so. fantastic. Well, um so let's let's go back over. If people want to get on your website, Friends of Beverly Animals, just the way it sounds, Friends of Beverly and uh, all the information about uh, donating, adopting, um, uh, fostering forms, etc., are are there. And you are kind enough to make your